some critical factors that you need to consider before deciding whether to buy Lake Garden Residences. Hi everyone, I'm Marcus here and I'm taking a bit of risk for this because it's the first time I'm doing in this format. So smash the like button because it encourages me to do more of contents like this. Before we jump into the nitty gritty of this project and discuss its pros and cons, I want to hear from you. Drop me a comment below and let me know what other projects you're curious about and we will try our best to create a content for that as well. Let's get started. Now, who is the developer? It is none other than Wing Thai Asia, who is not a new kid on the block because they have more than 60 years of history and a strong track record of building quality developments. Here are some examples. Number one, the Crest, located at Commonwealth, completed in 2017. Number two, the M, which is located at the Bugis area, District 7. The expected TOP is this year. Number three, Le Novel Upmore, which the name suggests it is in the Upmore Park area, the most prestigious part of Singapore. And near Tangling, completed in 2014. Also, last but not least, the Garden Residences, located in District 19, completed in the year 2021. All these are some of the developments that were built by them. So this development will come with 306 units and each unit will actually get one car park lot. There are 12 different unit types ranging from one bedroom to five bedroom but one thing to note is that the two bedroom compact actually comes with a powder room and I think this is the only one in Singapore that offers that. Number two, fun fact, the five bedrooms actually comes with their private lifts and have an unblocked greenery view of the lake and also the Jurong Lake Gardens as well. So this is something that will be perpetual because Jurong Lake is actually the third national park of Singapore First one is actually none other than Botanical Gardens. Number two is the Gardens by the Bay. Number three of Singapore is actually Jurong Lake Garden, which is something that many do not know. Last but not least, 75% of the units actually come with unblocked greenery or the lake views. Now, before we deep dive into the details of the project and comparing the prices to other developments, because this video takes us very long to produce and we really put in a lot of effort, we would like to ask for a small favor, which is to tap the like button. This will really help the channel. Thank you in advance. So these are some critical factors that you need to consider before deciding whether to buy Lake Garden Residences. Number one, the proximity to the MRT station, which in this case, we are about 10 to 15 minutes walk away. Number two, did you study the transformation around the area? And number three, the past transacted pricing of the resale and the new launch around this area. Number four, the exit strategy, which means who will be your future buyers and is your intended exit price logical and achievable. And number five, most importantly, is affordability, which if you would like to find out more, please check out our previous video which talked about buying a $2 million property in the most prudent way and also buying a $1 million property in the most prudent way. And that should give you clarity. So number one, the proximity to the MRT station. Currently, Lake Garden Residences is about 10 to 15 minutes walk away from the MRT station. And in future, once the Chinese Garden is open, you're able to cut across the garden to get to Chinese Garden MRT as well, which is quite a stroll in the park. But above and beyond that, I want to check similar properties in Singapore in the outskirts and 10 to 20 minutes away from MRT station, how did the investors perform in terms of profit margin? So Whistler Grand is one of the example in West Coast area, 19 minutes walk to Clementi MRT. I don't think this is walking distance. Let me know if you think otherwise. So the top profit making transaction was 681,000. Total, there were 62 profitable transactions and zero unprofitable. That means everybody who bought the development make money. Number two, Clement Canopy, 30 minutes away from MRT station. Also, the profit margin were quite insane. 87 profitable transaction. Number three, Park Botania in Fernville, totally not walkable to MRT because in Fernville, there's no MRT station at all. There were 76 transactions that were profitable and there were hardly any unprofitable transactions. And number four, lastly, the comparable one will be Riverfront Residences, 13 minutes walk away from Aukang MRT station. You basically cut across a lot of HDB blocks, so you will most likely be looking up all the way when you're walking to make sure things don't fall on your head when you're walking past. So the top profit-making transaction was 756000 total 190 transactions that were profitable and this only TOP this year already 190 profitable transactions and zero unprofitable transactions so all in all we want to share with you that if you're looking for investment 
Being not near the MRT station doesn't mean that you cannot profit as long as the purchase price is right, as long as the facilities are nice, as long as you're getting yourself a good value unit. Even though you're not near MRT station, you can still profit. Number two, did you study the transformations around that area? If you haven't been checking out Jurong for the longest time because the last launch was actually 2016, for your information, there's actually this website called jld.gov.sg created specifically to update the public about what's going to happen in Jurong. And recently, after our Singapore and Malaysian government visited the China government together, and they decided that they are okay to actually propose a new plan for KL SG High Speed Rail. There has been major updates on the JLD.gov.sg, which most notably, right, the few plots of land beside the current Genting Hotel are actually changed to white sites with a plot ratio of 5.6. Based on our estimate, it should be able to build 14-storey skyscrapers over at this site. And there are not just one, two, three, four, five, six. Six plots across. That is on top of the three plot white site that was just being announced, which is beside the current JQ. So having all these things right, just gives us the confidence that yes, I think the government is still quite motivated to make the KLSG high speed rail reality. But of course, this is just what I believe. Up to you to decide. And on top of that, not only Jurong is a second CBD, the location of this development forms a trinity of transformation which includes the Jurong Innovation District and the Tuas Megaport. So if you're someone that believes that the government will usually make their plans work, this is something you can consider. So number three, the past transactions, whether have they crossed $2,000 per square foot? And the answer is no. Because for the very fact that the last ever launch in Jurong was year 2016, that is the reason why you haven't seen $2,000 per square foot in Jurong before. However, let's take a look at the current transacted prices over in Jurong area. For example, J Gateway, Whistler, Graham, both have already clocked in transactions that were above $1,900 per square foot. For Twin View and Lake View, which are also near the Jurong area, have also tested above $1,800 over dollars per square foot. And if you actually analyze the price, usually for resale versus new launch, new launch will usually command a difference of between 15 to 20%. So you do the math and tell me what you think Lake Garden Residences should be launching at. There's also Lentor Modern, which is in other parts of Singapore, in Lentor area. Also OCR, they already traded above $2,500 per square foot. The Botany at Dairy Farm, which is actually a dairy farm, the name says it all. Uh, similar attributes, about 15 minutes away from the MRT station, is already sold at $2,400 per square foot for the top transacted pricing. And Florence Residences in Aokang, also traded $2,100 per square foot ever since last year. So if you ask me, if we just using Jurong as a gauge, what's the highest PSF may not be a very updated way to do your research and that may actually cause some wrong decision making. So if you look at the other parts of OCR, people in the outskirts of Singapore were already willing and able to buy OCR above $2,000 per square foot. I always tell my customers, uh, Singapore, nali do you have a no matter where you go, got rich people can afford one. So doesn't mean you need to be town to get people to buy 2000 plus. It's already tried and tested in the outskirts of Singapore. So that's not a concern over here. So number four, your exit strategy, which means who will be your future buyer. You must be able to identify these people to know that there will be people who are willing and able to afford to buy your property in future at your intended exit pricing. So who will be your future buyers? Based on reports, every one out of two units sold in a new launch is actually consumed by a buyer with HDB address. And which means that one out of two of the buyers will be HDB upgraders. So let's take a look at the future HDB pricing around this area to see whether these buyers are able to afford. This is a chart that shows the Tengah BTO back in 2018 when they first launched BTOs in the Tengah. The max price for a five-room flat was actually 480000 So fast forward, fast track to today, 30th of May 2023, Tengah Plantation Verge. The highest price for a five-room flat in Tengah is actually traded at 575000 based on HDB website. So in order to project the future pricing of this BTO, let's take a look at the current sold MOP flats in Bukit Batok, which is around the same area. Skyline 1 and 2 at Bukit Batok, the highest transacted five-room flats were already traded above 900 k and West Terra at Bukit Batok, which is the latest, just MOP if I'm not wrong, uh, already traded at 880000 for Bukit Batok. These are some things that you may not have known. So when we did the calculation, right, the profit margins can be up to 75% from BTO purchase to MOP. 
So using that, let's take a look at those people who bought Plantation Verge. What kind of future margin can they expect? So highest transacted 5 room flat was 575000 for Plantation Verge. Park Meadow at Tenga in May as well. Highest transacted 5 room flat was actually $607,000. So if you use $607,000 multiplied by 1.75, it gives you what? 1.062 million. So let me know in the comment section, do you think this is going to happen in Tenga in the next 5 to 10 years? Seeing Tenga HDB cross $1 million. Let me know in the comment section. I would like to hear from you. Next, in West Area, we are also a very fortunate bunch. Why? Because if you know, right, the past few years, ECs were quite popular and EC owners usually make pretty decent or handsome profits. So let's take a look at the EC around this area to see who are the future buyers and whether they can afford. Number one, Westwood Residences, they clocked 67 transactions which are profitable and zero unprofitable transaction. Highest profit made was 526000 Bought in the year 2015 at $796 PSF. Transacted today at $1,153 PSF. And fun fact, you know, people who live in Jurong usually don't want to move out of Jurong. Right? Yeah, they still want to stay in the area. So Acres, the highest profit made was actually $769,000. Bought in year 2015 at $749 PSF. And sold in year 2023 this year at $1,381. So how much do these people exactly take home? I did the math so you don't have to. If the person bought it back then in 2015, assuming they take an 80% loan, they are exiting this property with capital, cash plus CPF with more than $1 million. So can these people be your future buyers when you want to exit? Let me know what you think. So next, Wondervale as well is in Chachukang as well. Highest transacted, highest profitable transaction was $798,000. Bought in year 2016 at $770 per square foot. Sold in the year 2023 at $1,410 per square foot. So this person bought 2016, sold 2023. Seven years, they made close to $800,000 profit. So can these people be your future buyers? Rainforest as well. This one took a bit longer. Bought 2012, sold 2022, made a profit margin of $709,000. Having said all these things, if you're worrying in the West, will people be able to afford at your exit price, right? I think looking at this may give you a bit more confidence to do that. Now, in conclusion, buying a property is always very daunting and many people will tell you different things, whether yes or no. But as long as you do your own due diligence like this, going through the research, going in-depth about the transformation, your exit strategy, and your affordability, this will give you more confidence to move forward. Because in my line, over the last 15 years, I've seen many people, because of fear, they miss out their opportunities and eventually get priced out of the market. So as usual, if you have any more questions, drop them in the comment section below and we'll try our best to answer them. If you haven't liked already, please do so right now. Consider subscribing to our channel and I would also like to invite you to join our Telegram channel where I have been sharing daily real estate news. Thank you for watching the video and I'll see you at the next video.